So time for another class. Uh, my client Jan told me that I hadn't done one for a while, so um, this is for Jan. It's a standing class. The focus is on strengthening the legs. I think we're not getting out enough at the moment and uh, walking up enough hills. So this is for, for walk, rather than walking up some hills. Um, and it's uh, a little bit of balance work and some uh, keeping the back straight so that if you have osteoporosis, it's totally fine for you to do. Um, enjoy. So keep your feet slightly apart, just under, under your hip joints and close your eyes. And then just notice how your body, your weight, just naturally moves forward and back and to the left and to the right. And then start to take your weight forwards and backwards. And it only going a little bit forward so that you feel the weight just start to go towards your toes and go towards your heels. But you're not having to claw your toes, lift your heels, lift your toes at all. Come all the way forward now and imagine a clock face them. You're going to go around the clock face in a clockwise direction. And really the clock face is only as large as your feet. So it's not a big movement. All the way back to the top of the clock face. And then you're going to go round in the other direction, back in an anti-clockwise direction. When you get all the way to the top, bring your weight back to centre and just open your eyes. Roll onto the outside of your foot so the inside of your sole of your feet are looking at each other. And then come back through, roll onto the outside of your foot so that the soles of your feet are looking away from each other. Now keep doing this inside and outside. And as you're doing it, your knees are staying still, hopefully. But actually notice what is doing the work, because it should be about your ankles doing the work. You're rolling on those heel bones. But is it actually your knee and your hip that's doing the work? Try and keep them nice and still. Now come back so that your feet are flat on the floor. Take a moment just to think about where your balance is through your posture. This is me from the side. The outside of my ankle bone at the bottom here, where we often twist our ankle, should be in line with that big bone that sticks out in our hips which should be in line with our shoulder and the tip of our ear. Now, it's not the same for everybody because a lot of us have, sit, have been sitting down for too long. But, um, so our shoulders roll forward. What a lot of people tend to do is they let, tend to let their hips come forward. And this is a really simple correction. So just take your hips back so that they feel as if they are in line with the outside of the ankle joint. And as you do that, you may feel that your abdominals just kick in slightly. I don't want you to forcibly um, make your abdominals work, but this should be an automatic reaction. So just let your hips come forward again of your ankles and then take them back ever such a little bit. It's just a centimetre or so. And as you do that, notice how your abdominals just naturally fire. So you're gonna keep your hip back over that ankle. And then shift your weight slightly onto the foot, but watch that you don't, I want you to try and keep your hips and your ribs in line with each other. And lift the other foot so that you're on your tippy toe. And you're gonna roll around that foot to the little toe, to the side of the foot, to the heel, to the inside of the heel, back up the side of the foot to the big toe. And one more time before you change directions. Really mobilizing the ankle. But as you do this, you're also mobilising the knee and the hip. When you've done this second one, you're going to come down from that and you're going to go across the other side again. Keep the hip back, don't let it come forward. And then you're going to keep those ribs stacked over the pelvis onto the tippy toe of the other leg and two circles around, allowing the knee to move 
allowing the hip to move as you do this. Knowing that you stay open through the front of the groin of the supporting leg. Last time in the second direction. And then bring that foot back down. So we're going to go on to our blocks now. Your block, which I didn't mention I'm afraid, um, should be, in fact I'm going to get you just uh, explain to you that I want you to have a block. I want your block to be um, about two inches foot thick. So you could use a, a book if you wanted to. Um, and we're going to stand on it. Make sure it's a book that you don't mind standing on. So that's down on the floor. And you're going to place one foot on that block. Now, in this position, this has kind of made your legs different lengths, hasn't it? So um, what I'd like you to do is bend the block knee. Make sure your pelvis feels level. And then just start to press down into the block leg and then bend the block leg. And as you're pressing down into the block leg and, and bending it, you're trying to keep your pelvis absolutely dead straight. If you use the reformer usually, then you can think of this as your footwork. So you've got your shoulder rest that you're pressing into, you've got the foot bar that you're pressing into. And at the end of it, you're just finding a place where you feel that you have opened those reformer springs up as much as you possibly can before you come back down again. This next time, you're going to stay all the way up and we're going to drop the hip down. So we're trying, we're thinking about lengthening our waist here. Drop the foot that is on the floor down towards the floor. Now, it might not get all the way down there. As you do this, you're keeping the block leg straight. So it's a real lengthening of the waist. Now, my tendency would be to let my pubic bone roll forward as I do this, but as I know that I'd like to do this, I'm not gonna do it. So I'm gonna really think about lengthening through the back of my waist more than the front of my waist. Watching that your ribs stay stacked, because what would be nice is for you just to lean over, and that would be very naughty. Stay where you are now. Little moment of balance. Think about that hip staying back, that groin staying open. The ribs staying stacked on the pelvis. Lift the leg, and then step it back behind you. Make sure that you feel that your feet are wide enough, you're on train tracks, your left foot is on the left train track, your right foot is on the right train track. And then just start to lean forwards and backwards. It's actually the front knee that you're taking forwards and backwards, just a little way. As you take that to front um, knee forwards and backwards, just look down at your back heel and check that it's in line with the front foot and do turn it out if you need to. Now at this stage, you'll feel a little calf stretch. Stay forwards this time, and then start to roll the knee in and roll the knee out. This is a small movement. In fact, what I'd like you to consider is it's the shin that you're rolling in and out. And as you do that, you're keeping the edges of your foot down. So you're not rolling onto the inside and the outside of your foot. And this allows you to mobilise the little bones in your foot. We're going to make it a little bit different now. So come forward, take the knee out, come back, bring the knee in and forwards again. So we're doing three little circles in each direction. As you do this, the whole surface of the foot stays down. Now go back in the other direction, in, back, out, and forwards, three times. You'll notice that there's a little bit of a firing going on in your hip as well, just gently, those deep hip rotators. Stay forwards now, and lift the back heel. I'm gonna show you this from the side. So, you lift the back heel, and then let the knee drop in. Now I want you to line up, Side of knee, big bone in the hip, shoulder, if possible ear. Don't worry too much about the ear. Um, and then in this position, just 
drop yourself down a little bit lower. Now this is just your start position before we even start the exercise. So notice it's far easier if you stick your bum out and lean forward to do this, but it feels different. Keeping in that really upright position, you're gonna take your knee out and in. Pelvis stays really still while you do this. So you're getting this length down the, the outside of your hip as you bring that knee into the midline. For me, it feels like I'm using the back of my inner thigh to create this movement. Just two more. And then you're gonna step forward again. Well done. So we've gotta do the same on the other side now. So other foot comes onto the block. We start with the block knee being bent, the foot knee being straight. And pelvis is nice and level, ribs stacked on top. And then just straightening out that bent, that uh, block leg and bending it. And remember I gave you that cue of being on the reformer and opening the springs at the end of this movement as much as you can. If you're not a reformer person, then just imagine you're trying to touch the ceiling with your head just at the last moment. Gently pressing into the block to find as much length as you can. Stay up there this time. And keeping your both knees straight, you're gonna drop your sole of your ground foot to the floor and then lift it up. It may be that it feels different to the other side, this one. Remember the cheats are to let your ribs swing over, so you're trying to keep those ribs stacked, or to let your hip push out. For me, what I like to do is to let my pelvis roll forward. So I want you to think of keeping your pubic bone towards your navel just a little bit as you do this. Now come back up onto your tiptoes. We're gonna take a moment of balance, so allow your block foot to melt into the floor, stack your ribs, lift your weight out of the leg, step it back behind you. Take a moment to check that the back heel is parallel to the front leg and that you feel like you're on train tracks, right foot on right track, left foot on left track. And then start to bring your knee forward and backwards. And as you're going forward, you'll feel a stretch in the back heel. There's a lot more going on with this. I want you to also notice as you bring your front knee forwards that you're almost flattening the arch of your block foot a little. It's only subtle though. Now come forward with that knee and then just start to tick tock the foot in and out. I, I think more of the shin because it makes me control the movement a little bit better, but you can think of the knee and you're keeping the inside and the outside of your foot down so that you're not going onto the edges of your foot. We can make the circles now. So go forward, out, back, in and forwards. Three circles in each direction, mobilizing through your hip, mobilizing through your foot. And then back round in the other direction. A little bit of core work as we keep ourselves aligned. Come all the way forward, lift your back heel. And again from the side here, back heel lift, knee just bends and comes forward and then lining up middle of knee, hip, shoulder. If possible head but don't worry about it too much. And then lower down. And in this position here, you're going to tick tock your knee in and out. The inside and the outside of the sole of the ball of the foot stays down as you do this. <sighs> Pretend that it's easy. And notice how you're using that inner thigh to do this. Keep the hip open, the groin open as you keep working because you'll start to want to let your bum go back and release those buttock muscles. One last time and then step forward. I'm going to step off the block now. Just push that block out of the way. 
So, nice stance. And just start to turn to one side. And then turn back to the other side. And the first thing I'd like you to allow to happen, if at all possible, is that you feel that you are rolling through your feet. So as you turn to the right, you're going to the outside of your right foot, the inside of your left foot. And as you turn to the left, you're going to the outside of your left, the inside of your right. And you may feel that your malleoli, sorry, your outside ankle bones are turning as well. And just allow that to happen. And then come back to the front of your room. Feet go a little bit wider. And I want you to keep your knees slightly um, uh, bent, just ever so slightly bent, just to take some of the strain out of your hamstring. And we're going to tip from the hips. So I would like you just to feel that you're lifting your um, tail up and you're, you're going to bend in your groin, your hip, right, or your hip joints, and then straighten back up. Now the reason we're doing this is because most people will want to bend in their back. So we're going to try and keep our back nice and straight as we tip from our hips. And that takes some back muscle and some core muscle to do that. It takes quite a, a lot of awareness of your body, where your body is in space to do it. One of the things I do quite often when I'm teaching this is teach this with a, um, with a brush, a, uh, a, a sweeping brush, or a dowel handle, um, and it touches the base of your pelvis, the middle of your back between your ribcage and your head. Sometimes it doesn't touch your head, quite often it doesn't touch your head. And when you're doing this movement with dowel, the broom handle should stay on your bottom and between your shoulder blades the whole way through. Now we're gonna increase this movement a bit and make it into a squat. So you're gonna start to bend your knees as you do it. As you do this squat, your knees are going to come forward and your bottom's going to go back. Your heels stay down, by the way. So your knees don't go too far forward, but you're getting a stretch in your uh, Achilles area as you do it. So we're going to change up the squat ever so slightly now. And I'm going to ask you to bring your arms forward, but think of your knees going backwards as you take your bottom down. So the focus is on all the energy going backwards and you can counter this with your arm movement. Good. Keep doing this. Let's add a little bit of balance work to this now. So as you come up, shift your weight to one leg and just balance. Come back down again. So we'll do this a few times and then I'll give you a little bit of hard time over it. Lift and balance. So, think about stacking ribs and pelvis. Allow your foot to melt into the floor when you take your weight into it. If you find yourself going onto your edges, this becomes really difficult to do. We're going to do one more to each side. And then you're going to come down. Now bring your feet together. So we're going to carry on with our squats, but what's interesting about this is um, it's very clear when your legs are together whether you're going straight down and back or whether you've got a little tilt off to one side. So if you can see yourself while you're doing this, it's really useful. So, Feet nicely together and then just take yourself into your squat. And as you're doing this, have this sense of whether your pubic bone is staying right between your feet or whether your pubic bone is kind of veering off to one side. Maybe go so far down and then you do a little veer off to one side. And really this is just about you becoming more aware of what your habits are and what you do. So, because balance is always useful, just lift a leg, come back down, 
lift the leg and down. Good. Remembering as you come up, you're trying to find that length and you're trying to find your standing leg. And just think about whether at the end of that movement, whether you feel that your hip is back in line with your ankle or whether you're thrusting your pelvis forwards. One last time. And back to the floor with your feet. Well done. Okay, so take a moment. Just close your eyes. Lift your shoulders up to your ears and release your shoulders back down. Open your eyes, lift your arms all the way up to the ceiling. I'm not going to lift mine up because you're going to see my belly. Bring them out in front. And thank you very much.